Welcome back to Not Just Another Sex Podcast. My name is Samaya. I'm your host. And today is another solo with Samaya. So I don't necessarily have an outline for today because there are so many things that I need to catch up with you guys about. And this is like my fifth time trying to record this. <laughs> um, I don't think I have put one of these out for like two or three weeks. And I was running up against so many issues and I was really trying to be so optimistic and I really, it was giving little engine that could. And I just, I kept trying to record this and for so many reasons it just didn't work. Um, and I actually recorded it multiple times, but either the audio got messed up and so it's just me talking or <laughs> um, ran out of time after I finally got everything set up or whatever. And so, um, Today is not one of my better days. I am definitely um, in the soup of life right now. And I just, you know, want to be transparent as always with you guys about what's going on. So let's catch up. So um, the past month that we didn't really get to talk like that was April. Um, and I have a lot of mixed feelings about it. So April was eclipse season. I know that eclipse season was given like all this energy and people were doing a lot and oh my God, oh my God, the eclipse. But there weren't a lot of people, a lot of the hype was coming from a lot of people that didn't actually know what the eclipse does or what it means or things like that. So if you've heard it and you're tired of hearing it, I'm asking you to listen one more time about the eclipse so I can kind of just explain what happened and how it really affected me. So eclipse, eclipses happen <laughs> every year, right? Um, the ones that usually get the most hype are the ones that we can actually visibly see from Earth um, because of course they can sell tickets or places to get a lot of tourism because people wanna be able to see and things like that. Um, but eclipses have always been um, a, it's almost like playing Mario Kart and you go over that little shiny part that makes you go fast and it speeds you off into the next thing. And so every year, um, a lot of the change that you're going to go through that year really occurs around the eclipse, depending on what type of eclipse it is that year, right? And so the eclipses were really um, monumental for me this year because they were on the Aries Libra axis, and I am an Aries, right? And so um, there are a lot of over. There's a lot of overlap in astrology. Um, that has really been affecting me this year. And if you guys think about it, you notice it too, because in the last year and a half, everything in my life is completely different. I have a totally different career. I live in a totally different place. My lifestyle has changed. My budget has changed. My, um, my purpose feels like it has changed or at least expanded. Um, I've changed, you know, I, I deal with different people. I, my approach, my faith, my anxiety, everything about my life is different you know, in the last year and a half. And so a lot of that is because the North Node and the South Node, which just for shorthand, those are the points of destiny in your birth chart or in astrology and everybody has them. Um, and, and the entire world has points of destiny in the sky each year as well. The North Node points this year are also in Aries and Libra. So North Node points of destiny, right? So those who have Aries Sun or heavy Aries placements like a moon or a rising are feeling a lot of these changes this year because the world, the collective as a whole is sitting in this Aries destiny point, right? So there's that. But then the eclipse, which is about endings and beginnings, right? So eclipses are nothing but supercharged full or new moons, okay? So y'all know that every month we have a full moon and we have a new moon, right? If you didn't know, full moons are kind of like a full bladder. You release, you let go. You don't want to get a whole bunch of good stuff and you got to go to the bathroom, right? You're like, no, nah, let me let me empty this out before we do anything else, right? So full moons are for releasing, letting go of something. And whatever sign the full moon is, those are the qualities that you're supposed to be letting go of, right? Um, and then your new moon is for manifestation. So whatever the new moon is in, that's what you're leaning towards, going more into a new cycle is starting. And for eclipses, um, a lunar eclipse is basically a supercharged full moon of releasing, and a solar eclipse is supercharged manifesting new beginnings, right? So if you guys have been following me for a while, have heard my story, then you know that I used to be married. And I'm just gonna cut straight to the chase. I 
went back through the calendar and I looked at when the last time we had eclipses in Aries and Libra, Aries or Libra, right? Since they share an axis, right? They're right across from each other on the chart. So you got Aries, the polar opposite directly across from the chart is Libra. Okay. So I looked and the last time that Aries or, or Libra was even in the eclipse rotations for the year was back in like 2013. So to catch you guys up, that's when I was living in Brazil. Okay, so I lived in Brazil for six months and I had met my son's father, my also ex-husband, um, right before I went to Brazil. And when the time for me to come back home to the States came, I told him, I said, you know, I really could see myself living here. Like, it was the first time I garnished a following. I had got into yoga. Like, I was like I was a handstand, headstand, back bend, all types of crazy yoga pose type girly, right? And that's the first time that I really built a community. And so I was getting all these followers and stuff from just sharing my journey into yoga. And so he shared that that wasn't really his, his thought process or, you know, what he was into or what he was about. Um, and so I came home. I didn't necessarily come home for him, but I didn't put any extra effort into staying or extending my time there. So I came back, got married. You know, it was like we, we dated only for like a year. Anyways, I came back, I ended up getting married, graduating college, starting my life, whatever, right? What I noticed in the sky was that there was a lunar eclipse, lunar equaling full moon, equaling release, right? Lunar, full moon, release. Um, and it was in the sign of Aries. And there was no solar eclipse for Aries, right? But it was lunar eclipses in Aries. If Lunar eclipses mean releasing, and it was releasing of the Aries qualities. And if Aries is my sun sign, which is your main point of identity, right? I, the way it resonated with me is that I released a certain part of my individuality at that time in 2013, right? And that was crazy to me because now, all these years later, I am I feel like I'm right back in the same spot. I'm a wanderer again. I'm van lifing. I yes, I have my son, so like that's a new addition, but I have my own independence, right? My own life and I'm figuring it out day by day just like I was back then, right? Um and I feel like I've come to a fork in the road where I'm back at the same point where last time I went right and maybe this time it's time to go left or last time I went left and this time it's is go right. And I feel like my faith has me feeling like something really amazing is coming. But the difficulty that I feel right now is that in the last month, I was so emotionally boggled down and still trying. And sometimes it just felt a lot like I was going three steps forward to get knocked six steps back. You know, um, I finally got the van battery fixed. So I don't know if y'all know or have seen any of my van reels, but for over a month, every time I turned off the car, I had to jump the van to get it to start back. That's really scary when this is my main location for living with my child. It's the only place I have to live with my child. Um, and so that was really scary. I finally got it fixed. It ended up being covered by warranty. Thank God. Um, and then right after that, I get back to Atlanta, my windshield gets cracked, right? My windshield gets cracked. Then, <laughs> then the gas gets cut off at the content house because, you know, I, I pay the bills as I can. You know what I'm saying? I, I pay things as I can. But at the same time, I book an interview that's actually happening tomorrow with someone that I've been following their career my entire career. Like they have been my mentor in my head, the person that I follow. Like, yeah, I know how like Tyler Perry had Oprah and he was like, oh, I saw Oprah and I just, I just resonated so much with her. That my person, I'm interviewing her tomorrow, right? So it's like, I feel so conflicted because at the time that I was leaving Brazil and letting go of so many things was around the time that I actually stumbled upon this person and I was so moved by their story, right? 
And even in my own career for years, I kept trying to cross paths like intentionally. And I mean, we were hanging in the same circles. There was no reason that I couldn't necessarily get in touch with this person. And I couldn't. And it's so crazy because I didn't run into this person until one, I stopped trying. And also two, it was on a night that I actually had to make a choice to choose myself or to be a people pleaser. And I chose myself. And I ended up meeting someone that I had been dying to meet all my career, right? And now I'm interviewing them tomorrow. So part of me feels so conflicted because I am literally, I don't wanna say struggling because words matter. They do, they matter, they matter, they matter. And I'm gonna talk to myself nice. I'm gonna talk to myself nice. I've had difficulty with accepting some of the day-to-day routines of my life right now. But at the same time, I'm making amazing strides internally, externally with my work, the people that I'm working with. And it feels like no one knows or it feels like it feels like I'm doing the foundation, you know? And sometimes my heart is just really heavy because that has been so difficult that it has sometimes gotten in the way of me sharing and showing up for you guys and it really weighs on my heart. I've had a community since before people were doing the close friends thing. Like before I know like celebrities are doing it now and stuff like that but I already had it when I saw it like going viral and things like that I was already hey y'all this is for close friends we can post here back when I had the sexual essentials page even with patreon a lot of people they record they put stuff up they're not really accessible like I fucks with my community it's always been there for me but lately I'm having difficulty with staying afloat and keeping my mental health well that I found myself wondering, is my community going to be there when I get back? Or if I have to take a couple weeks, like literally I kept trying to record in April my solos and it just was not working. And all I was like, all I kept thinking was like, these people are going to unsubscribe. And I don't know if y'all noticed, but a lot of people have been moving to Jesus content and it is no slight against Jesus, trust me. But we see a lot of people that come through the content house to record and things like that. And all of a sudden we see them switching to Jesus content and it's on there. And it's just like, is, is, are you doing this just to garnish community or is that really what you want to do? And so that has weighed on me because as a consumer and as a person who myself is not, I'm not going to say I'm frugal right now because I don't think that's necessarily a positive word, but whatever it is, like I'm being very choosy with my finances at the time it really hurts me if I spend money on something that's not what I think it is. And I guess I'm so vulnerable with you guys and I'm keeping you guys so updated in the moment of what's going on with me that I get worried that I don't want people to think like, damn, her life changed every week. Like, I guess I I struggle with wondering, is my tribe really my tribe? Which is not nothing for you guys to worry about, but it's a part of me that had to realize I still have to, work on faith as well. The people that are for me will be there for me. The people that need me will find me and it'll be okay, right? But in the midst of, you know, the past month, I got a bill for my mortgage and it went up $1,500. What the fuck? $1,500 is crazy. And because of that, that's how the gas ended up getting cut off because it cut in two. You know what I'm saying? Now I'm spending $1,500 a month, every month extra right and at the same time my patreon fo- my patreon follow- following has also dropped in the same amount that some of my bills have increased so really i feel a three thousand dollar difference of pressure right so i'm like what the fuck am i going to do i don't want to be a person that changes content to follow the following i've never been that person i'm literally technically in this quote-unquote hole because I've been saying that regardless of what people have been asking me for, this is what has been on my heart to do or to create and things like that. And I get messages like, y'all, if y'all could see some of the messages that I get, and I'm talking about, they are long. And people are like, I don't even think you know what finding your platform has done for me. And 
it's shit like that that makes me say it doesn't matter. I can do this. But at the same time, at the same time, I get confused because I'm like, how could this be what I'm supposed to be doing? If sometimes it's so hard to do it that I can't show up for my community or I miss multiple weeks. And so I've just been struggling with that, trying to give myself grace and the eclipses and all of that. The eclipses have been in Aries. The North Note this year has been in Aries. And then and that's another thing. The next full moon after that was in Scorpio. After all the eclipses and all that stuff happened, the next full moon was in Scorpio. Scorpio is similar to Pluto, where it's like a sign of transformation and your shadow side and things like that. And so full moon again, meaning release, we after all the eclipses and all that, those big shifts happen. Then we had one more full moon that was for releasing the dark things. And when I tell you emotionally, I felt like Jekyll Hyde, like one minute I was OK. And the next minute I was purging things that I hadn't even remembered in years, years. And so that made me feel a lot of ways because one, it could be like, I don't like feeling like this. Those are the type of feelings that used to make me think that maybe I wasn't supposed to be alive. You know, so those kind of, I don't take those type of feelings lightly. Right. And so I also, of course, in a clear state of mind is like, OK, that means I'm purging, I'm releasing. And what my, my body tells me and my spirit tells me and faith tells me is that. I'm releasing and I'm purging because I'm making space for something, right? I've asked for some pretty big shit. And it doesn't just come overnight. It comes with knocking down foundations. But even after you completely knock down a building, it still takes a while for you can even build on that again, right? And so I'm remembering all these things and I know all these things. I know all these things. But at the end of the day, there are things that are due now, right? And there are, there, there, yeah, it's stuff I got to do now. Now, it was not all bad at all. This is just me telling you guys how I'm navigating my feelings and navigating my emotions because I know that y'all be going through shit too. And it's like, yo, I'm trying to be a better person, but life, bro, you trying me. You trying me. And I'm telling you that you don't have to feel like you have to revert back to your old ways of being fearful, being scared. You don't have to do that. You know, you just have to accept and sit in like, I'm feeling this way for a reason. And if I feel it now, I'll let it go. And what I found is that even no matter how often it reoccurs, I am letting it go. And after I let it go, it's not coming back the same, right? It's just depending on your, your placements, you felt these eclipses a lot more. Just like next year when the eclipses are in a different, you know, a different sign, I might not feel it as much. What if it's in Scorpio and something else? I don't have a lot of major Scorpio placements. You know what I'm saying? So you have to look that up. What were the eclipses in? And then look at your chart. You can go to Cafe Astrology for that. So don't forget. Um, but also I've been doing some really amazing things. Right. And I haven't really wanted to talk about it because I don't like telling y'all about stuff and then it still has to come to fruition. But it's like this is happening and I'm building something from scratch. So the people that's fucking with it, they will have the patience to understand what's coming. But anyways, I know that you guys saw that The Real Mama Pod um, is a new show that I signed to the network. Um, and if you guys don't know, the shows that I put on the network, they don't have to pay for their show. Or they, we meet them in the middle where they, they pay what they can. They might pay for their makeup or whatever. The, yes, we are a business and people can book us to shoot their content, yes. But we also look for other people that have been doing it, that have been doing it, that have amazing content. It might look crazy. It might be a little unorganized, but the, the, the premise of it is there, right? And I find things that fit within the vision of where I see this thing going, right? And we produce these shows. So every six weeks, I have to be back in Atlanta because we bulk record for the network, right? So that's my show. That's the Real Mama Pie. And while I was away, I, we, started, we started recording for three, what, two more shows? Three, two more shows. Autism Mommy, um, which is my producer's show. She used to have a podcast and she, you know, we talked about it and she brought it back and it's going on the network. And then also um, another show, which needs its own episode of its own. But anyways, I, I really struggle with a lot of emotions because this woman has been there for me. She has been there for me. She has believed. And, you know, I felt really conflicted because 
this past week when we had both recording, I wasn't able to sit in on every one of her episodes. Like she sat in on mine. I, we all had to kind of fend for ourselves because now we were recording multiple shows, right? And they're all on the network. So she's a network producer now, not just my producer. She's a producer for all the shows. I'm an executive producer for all the shows, you know? So sometimes I have to step away and go do something else or go do my makeup because I have to shoot next or whatever. And, but I looked back at the footage in my heart, like you could not tell me. I was such a proud mama bear. Like I was so proud it. her set was so gorgeous. It was so beautiful. And the episodes were good as fuck. Like I know everybody is not, um, doesn't have necessarily a relationship with autism or may not know or whatever, but it's the show itself is really about neurodivergence, right? And a lot of us are that way. And a lot of us have swept it under the rug because our parents have were not equipped to handle Neuro neurodivergent characteristics or qualities or didn't realize we were a little off. Like some of us zone in on certain ways or get really agitated or overstimulated randomly or get extreme anxiety or PTSD or we make a thousand lists or, and so the show talks about like one, understanding some of those things, but also how do you take care of yourself when neurodivergent qualities are hard to even prove, right? Like, look at the stuff with Amanda Seals going on. She said that she was autistic and on the spectrum and everybody came at her throat when not realizing most people are on the spectrum. That's why it's called a spectrum. You could be, y'all remember when I was, thought I was having a psychotic break, my neurodivergent qualities had got out of control, right? That, that's when I found out like, okay, I have ADHD. It's how do I manage it, things like that. But a lot of us have been raised where it's like, as a kid, this is how we do things. And then you get a whooping or you get in trouble if you don't. And, and adults would force us to do things a certain way. What's acceptable, blah, 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 blah. And as adults, we've still reverted back to certain ways because a lot of us are neurodivergent. All of our brains work differently, right? There is no normal. And so we don't, we're learning as adults how to one, accept our own children, but also how to accept ourselves and give ourselves the kindness when we're different when we're different, you know what I'm saying? And so um, if you have not Googled what like neurodivergent qualities are, please do so because a lot of us have them. So, and how it shows up in black women, especially is very different, excuse me, than men. So I know a lot of men will say like women don't listen. Y'all, we don't. They will ask us a question and we will end up answering something totally different. And it might be heartfelt and it may feel good and shit, but men don't necessarily divert in conversation the same way that we do. They are taught to pay attention to just that thing. And that's also why they're not very good with a whole bunch of details all the time. But women are. But that's because women are always paying attention to all the other details versus what's being asked. So all of us need to learn about neurodivergence. Anyways, her show good as hell, though, because it has a lot of her personality in it and things like that. And it was just I was so proud to give her something, give her a team, give her support like. My my producer, her son is fully on the spectrum. So she is his care she is his caretaker 24-7, which affects the jobs that she can get, right? And the schools that he can go to and different things like that. And so knowing that this woman has been doing it on her own for so long, and me knowing that we built something that we're able to give her the show and support her, show up for her, that that's that shit that keeps me locked into doing this shit. Feeling good like that. Got me confused as hell. Why do I feel so damn good doing something like that? <laughs> and I did. I just, I felt so good. And it was just like, damn, this struggle has been worth it to create beautiful things. And it's it's been difficult because I'm like, I see this as the world needs it. But I'm just like, does the world need it? Or do I just think so? So there has... I'm not doubting myself, I'm not doubting myself, but it's hard when you're struggling to survive and you're still creating. I just always want to be transparent with you guys because a lot of people are not. A lot of people are showing the finished product. They're not sharing uh, the hard parts, the parts that aren't cute. And that's not helping anybody, you know? So... Um, checking my notes, checking my notes. Um, yes. So anyways, with Patreon, some things are changing. Sexual Essentials, I'm still going to keep doing the videos and things like that. Um, I have two more weeks before I'm home. Um, 
and not even home because I'm bouncing around these days. Um, I have taken on full van life, if you guys did not know. Um, so I have to come, I come back to Atlanta every few weeks or six weeks to record and whenever I have to work. And then after that, I'm back on the road, right? Um, almost all of my stuff is transitioned. The only things at the content house are the stuff I need when I record. Um, and so that's been cute. Um, but I say that to say the Patreon now, all the shows that are coming out on the network, they will share that Patreon with me and their stuff will be organized in a different folder. So like if you go to, if you log into Patreon and look at the app, you'll see that they have collections. And so each of their shows will have different collections and each of them have different vibes. So like the Real Mama Pod, they had an episode the other day that had me in tears because they were just talking about like having resentment like for your children or for your spouse and just really being overstimulated and just feeling like you can't do it. And so um, I know they're going to be having monthly meetups that are like definitely for parents and it's for anybody, but they have spouses and they have children. So, you know, you guys will be able to join multiple conversations throughout the month and you will be getting multiple content from different types of creators all on the same Patreon that you guys are already subscribed to. Um, and again, that's because we are pushing community. We are a network. So I'm really excited about that because you guys are going to be able to get more content. Um, I know Steph is super spiritual and um, she also, her show, on her show, you can smoke. And so I know that we talked about having like a smoker's link up or like you bring your wine or whatever, you know, whatever your, your stuff is, whether it's anything at all. Um, but you bring it to the um, to the Zoom and we talk, we catch up, like we shoot the shit. So everybody has different things that will be coming to the Patreon. And so I'm excited for you guys to see that um, in the upcoming weeks. Um, we recorded Patreon content for The Real Mama Pod. So they did an episode with their husbands and oh my gosh, it was so fucking good. And yeah, we're going to have to do a, 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 a spinoff talk of that. Um, cause I don't want to get into all that right now, but it was so good. So like their, their husbands are going to be on their Patreon episodes. And so that's very interesting because they real people. It ain't giving like content couples and everything is all smiles and gravy. Nah, mm -mm. it's just real. It's watching them work through things and talk through things. And it's a really good example to have. I think, especially if you've been single for a while, sometimes you can get caught up in like only what people are posting online or the fact that when they talk about issues, they're talking about it after the fact in content form and teaching you something, but like seeing people go through it in the moment and how it's really done. Like it's not always just peaches and cream. It's not disrespectful, but it's definitely not always peaches and cream. So I'm excited about the Patreon expanding and you guys getting more content um, for sure. Um, also, let's see. I am working on um, a new schedule. Um, and I'm excited about that because I've been learning how to edit. So my my um, my journey into the cinematography world is growing, it's expanding, and um, my videographer has been giving me lessons. So um, you know you know he I, I'm his mentor. I was his mentor last year, um, and that's continued on. And so I've taught him a lot of things, and now it's his turn where he's teaching me. And so I've been learning how to edit and how to shoot and I've started off shooting from the phone which believe it or not is really difficult um and now I'm learning how to edit the content and excuse me that's been interesting it's definitely been a challenge um but because of that it takes a lot of time and because I'm at the beginning parts it takes even more time so um because of funds uh a lot of the pause that you guys seen on Instagram like from the reels from the show are because I have to cut the clips myself now. And because I have other shows that I'm producing, I'm cutting their clips as well. So my show's clips on Instagram have taken a back burner. Um, for, of course, that stressed me out at first, but also the episodes are still coming out on time. They're dropping on Wednesdays, the YouTubes are up. So if you're a loyal subscriber, you're not missing anything, right? Um, but, you know, be sure to go through there, show some love, repost a clip or whatever. But yeah, yeah. Um, What was I going to say? Oh, yeah. Repost the clips. Like, that helps. It's, it, it, help, it helps. Um, and also, please watch on YouTube. When you watch the show on YouTube, we are monetized on there. So every time you play one of the videos, whether it's the Charlie Van, Charlie Van, um, Charlie the Van videos or Real Mama Pod or Sexual Essentials videos. Um, yeah. So make sure you check that out. Um, 
But yeah, so I'm working on a new routine because when I'm in the van, I have to move more because I'm in such a small space. My body, I can actually feel the effects on my body, like my back and posture and needing to stretch. And so um, I'm thinking about doing a challenge. I just haven't figured out what the parameters should be. Um, but when I do, I will let you guys know on Patreon because also I've been feeling like I need to do another masturbation challenge. I have not masturbated every day in a while. Not every single day. Y'all know my normal is like in the morning and before I go to sleep. And I have not been doing that as consistently. And I know y'all probably like, okay, why is that a big deal? I use that time to manifest because it's when you're the most sensitive and the most vulnerable. Manifesting at that time is super, super powerful. And so um, I just want to get back into that habit. And because I'm dropping the new masturbation and manifestation class, plus meditation into there um, soon. I thought that would be a good time for us to kind of go through the course together and just use it for like a 30 day challenge. So um, most likely that will start um, in a couple of weeks um, before the end of May, but I wanna, I wanna get back to the content house again and I won't be back there for a couple of weeks. So, um, but yeah, I'm gonna work on that in my downtime. But um, yeah, I need a new routine. I need a new routine. Um, because like now I understand like what my schedule has in it, but my meditation schedule has gotten thrown off by this. I'm going to bed later again and things like that. So with me being in the van, I have to plan like, what is the best way for me to do all the things that I need to do, especially when I'm fighting against sunlight, right? Like when you camping. So um, that's another thing that I'm working on. All right, so. Um, next, uh, the art exhibit is almost done being edited. Um, and I'm going to talk about this in there, but, um, if you guys don't remember the art exhibit last year got canceled, um, it was supposed to be the third annual art exhibit and it was converted to a, not just another sex podcast live show instead. And so it was a live show and then it had performances afterwards and we recorded everything. It was one of the first of, uh, major events that my production company, um, produced, right? And it ended up going way over time because the videography was re really, really nice. We had um, an amazing setup, but because of that, we had over like five hours of content from the performers, right? And the, the panel and all of that stuff. And so um, because the event got canceled, I, and of course I was working on a small budget and of course I paid the performers, the files ended up being so big that they were too big for us to handle editing them in house with the other things that we had going on. And so I had to outsource them, but because I didn't have the funds, I've had to barter to get the files edited, right? So people, letting people know, hey, you can use the content house. And so finding someone who had the capacity and also who needed to use the content house um, took a while. And so I finally found someone and he's almost done editing. So he's been editing it in between his other jobs. And so they're just waiting on me to record a, a piece, um, talking to you guys to put it in there. So that should be out um, before the end of May is my hope. Um, because I, I just have to move on, but, um, that has been difficult because I've been trying to figure out what to say and how much do I want to share when I explain why the art exhibit is not coming back and what it has converted into and why. Um, and so I've been like just asking for discernment and figuring out what is appropriate to share and what's not, because I don't want to be messy, but at the same time, you know, I don't do things that, that don't serve me anymore or that don't feel good. And the art exhibit stopped feeling good. And I also was just feeling unappreciated for a multitude of reasons. And it's like, the art exhibit is very similar to how the content house is. A lot was given, a lot was given. I was funding the art exhibit out of my own pocket. And even after all the tickets would sell, it would barely break even. I was one of the first people that was paying um, intimate workers the, the amount that I was paying them. Like a lot of people were like, oh, how much should I, invoice you Samaya or they would invoice me and I would return the invoice and say hey you need to up this amount like showing mad love and just some of the feedback and response I got like about all of it just it just didn't feel good and so I'm just trying to find the words to really explain why that you know why the second one was the last art exhibit and why I will only be doing intimate events you know from now on so um be patient with me as I've been trying to find the words, um, but that is coming out. So most likely I'm going to put that on Patreon as well. Um, and yeah, so that is coming. All right. Last but not least. Um, 
after all that has happened in the last month, I came to a conclusion. I kept being pushed in a certain way. Um, and it brought me to the decision of starting a YouTube show. And it's called I Am Home. And it is a van vlog. It is a van show, a tiny home show. Um, because nothing <laughs> everything that I keep trying to do keeps diverting me back to the van everything and after so many things went left over the past month the one thing that kept working out for me was being okay on the van I was so consumed in things going on that I didn't even get to tell you guys that it was my birthday my birthday was April 14th and that had me feeling kind of not lonely on my birthday, but it a part of me did feel lonely because I didn't get that outpour of love that I'm so used to getting from you guys when I make a big fuss about my birthday or do a huge post or, you know, things like that. The only post that I did was from the van page and it got over 100,000 views in like a day. And... I just literally put a couple clips together from that weekend and my son has sent me a voice note and he sung me happy birthday and I put that as the sound for it. And I did a shroom trip for my birthday. I did, I took a, a van, I took a van trip actually for my birthday. Um, and even the way that that came to fruition was so crazy because I had no money. <laughs> I had no money. Um, but multiple things and all these things that I went through that I just told you guys about really pushed me to this decision. Of course, I could have just started doing some of my solos on the van, which I kept trying to do, which is what I kept telling y'all. I kept trying to do solos from the van. Like, oh, I could just record it from the van. It wasn't working. Anytime I tried to mix the van and not just another sex podcast, it wasn't working. And the truth is, if I asked myself, was that those are two different things. Not just another sex podcast is one thing. But the van is another. And I just kept feeling discouraged. Like there is no fucking way that I could tell them that I'm starting something new. And I'm having difficulty balancing the things that I'm doing now. Right? But the way that I felt around the van has told me that it's just one of those things that I have to trust what I'm feeling. So I'm starting the van vlog for multiple, multiple reasons. One being, I think that it's very important to be honest and transparent with people about my life. I do live on this van, and I say that because other people probably need to do tiny home living too. They, A lot of people are struggling with their rents, their mortgages. It literally is to the point that people are going to work and they still cannot afford to do anything else. And that is not normal. That's not normal. And even before I went into all this debt for the Conta House and the media group, I was living debt free. I was not, I, mm -mm. no, I was not. And I want to share just about my experience so that way people can understand that it's more accessible than people think. And also leisure. Being outside has helped, has always been good for my mental. And being outside is not something that you can just do if you haven't been taught. And I say that because we, I think in this in this country, we always want to go to another country, right? I want to go somewhere else. I want to go to Jamaica. I want to go to Peru. I want to go, you know, somewhere else, right? But especially with the economy, as crazy as it is, it's $12. Let's not play. Going outside or going to national parks and state parks is a cheat code. And a lot of people don't. Even when you fly, you can only get sometimes so close, immersed in the nature and the beauty of that location car travel has still always been a huge thing. And I'm not just saying it because I got to live in mine now. No, I'm saying it because look at all the trucks that are on the highway. The trucks tell you that road travel is still very, very, very extensive, right? Campsites are always full. But it is a cheat code because a lot of people do end up selling their home or whatever and just getting an RV and living in that, right? Um, and I just want to share how I'm doing it because even if it's not for you, there are certain parts of my lifestyle and economy the, the way that I'm balancing this economy stuff and how I'm making money and how all these things that other people could take from that and so and do you know how many times people see me in the van or see me post about it and they're like oh I would love to live like this yeah bitch all right I said that too until I saw my ass crying in the fucking van when it finally got cold and it was below freezing and I woke up and I was like oh my god I really live in a van 
So I want to share what that's like. Like, don't get me wrong. There are some views that I could literally, I could sell. They're so gorgeous, right? But that's not the whole picture. Sometimes it's waking up in a Walmart parking lot because you don't have a place to park or whatever. How do you find campsites? Like things like that. And so, and then also the beautiful views that I'm taking in. I want to share those things with you guys. I want to teach you guys how to plan your own road trips. How do you use a van if you don't have one? How do you go camping if you've never done it? Like, I just want to share those things and it's a part of my life now. And it isn't the same as not just another sex podcast. Yes, it will be still produced by the SE Network because it's my network and it's about sharing all different types of lifestyles and van life and tiny home living is one of them, right? Um, and so I'm really excited about it. And I named it I Am Home for another, for a multitude of reasons. I Am Home is, is really the truth. I am home. Samaya is home. And I am home. It, which is wherever I am, right? Where, wherever I am, wherever I park, wherever I be, that is home. And it's just the phase that I'm in right now. And I just, I don't feel like it's time for me to give up on production, but I also don't feel like I can go back into corporate America and handle creating at the level that I am. And it takes time. It's just like when you write in a movie. If you write in a movie, it's hard to write a movie and then go clock in for somebody else. You don't, you won't have the capacity to pour into the movie the way that you need to, so you could properly sell it, you know? And I'm just, I'm not, I have to find something or another source of income that's within alignment. And until I do or whatever right now, I, I, I have to live in a minimalist lifestyle. I have to, because I'm not ready to go back to work. I'm not ready for another mortgage. I, I have two mortgages already. That's enough for me. And I don't live at either one of those. You know, I, I'm following a path that has been given to me and I just want to keep documenting it and sharing it. Now, if y'all don't want to hear it, please motherfucker, let me know. But from what I see, I think a lot of people could use some of this information. A lot of people don't understand how to dig themselves out of debt. Like, I've dug myself out of debt multiple times. That's why before I bought the content house, I was debt free. I had an 830 credit score. I just took a risk with this and spent everything that I had and then used up all of my credit to do this vision. And I'm going to get out of this too. But all of these things took time. I When I started Sexual Essentials, which ended up being valued at over a million dollars and making over a million dollars in two years, I started that on a $500 credit card. You know, just because my circumstances look like this now don't mean that I don't have a plan. I just have to be able to survive and stay mentally strong to see it through. So not just another sex podcast is what it is and it's going to continue that way, but I feel obligated to share this story as well. And so that is going to be a YouTube show and it's gonna be free, it's just gonna be on the YouTube. But if you guys could go to the YouTube and subscribe to it, okay? Um, if you go to my YouTube, the link will be below. There are different playlists. There are playlists for all the shows that we have. So you have Not Just Another Sex Podcast, you have The Real Mama Pod, and you also will see um, a playlist for um, van content. And so I'll be putting van content there and then um, the extra van content, because I think I'll put out like a vlog once a month on there and it'll be like what my life was like over a month. And so I'll teach you guys about things that are on the van. I know people want to know how I designed it. Who, how do you find someone to do that? Um, all, I'm going to share all of that stuff. That way, even if you don't want to do tiny home living, you can learn how to camp or do RV life. So that way you can travel to more places on a budget, especially with what the economy is going through right now. Just because the economy is going through this stuff do not mean that you don't deserve to see waterfalls or see beauty or any of that, okay? Um, and the things I'm going to teach you are how I get around in every state that I'm in whenever I'm traveling. So, um, and also it's just good binge-worthy content. I don't know about y'all, but I fall asleep watching band content all the time. Band content and astrology content, but you know, who cares? Um, so, yeah. So, um, I am excited about it. Um, and I'm also starting it because... I'm still studying cinematography and I don't want to learn how to edit and then not use the content. 
I need to practice on something that I care about. I care about the van. I'm always trying to work from it. Um, so now I'm shooting, I'm shooting it there myself and I'm learning how to edit. And I'm, I'm, I feel so powerful. I've always been so connected to memories and photos and things like that. But I didn't realize I never thought I could do it. And I'm not saying like, oh, I'm about to pop up and become a photographer. Like, y'all know I change lives in two seconds. But that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that learning how to do all the roles of my team is what's making me an amazing executive producer, an amazing producer of work, and an amazing person to work with and work for. Because I don't ask my team to do things that don't make sense because I know how hard what it is that they're doing, right? Um, and also being able to step in when they need a day off or whatever, like, hey, I'll edit that for you, that's no problem, or whatever. I haven't met one executive producer in the past year that doesn't do everything that their team can do. And I'm inspired because Ava DuVernay did not pick up a camera until she was 32 years old, and look at her. And I don't know her backstory, but I know that I'm special. I know that I'm special, and I just, I'm not ready to quit. I'm not ready to quit. And I just, I'm holding on to that because, yes, my windshield got cracked. Yes, the gas got cut off. Yes. Oh, and I ain't even fucking tell y'all. Let me tell y'all this shit. So we got a booking a couple weeks ago. We had a booking by someone a couple weeks ago. And it was crazy because I didn't have enough for the final things that we needed for our book recording week. Like storage is really expensive, guys. So you need new hard drives and all kind of stuff. When we have all those people here, you got to feed folks, you know, things like that. Um, and we got this last minute booking and she had to extend it and it ended up covering everything that I needed. Y'all, why the fuck this lady left? And I guess her cards got stolen. So she say, you know, whatever. But because she reported fraud, it covered all her expenses. And so she had just paid us two invoices. Why they froze all the money after I not already spent it. So now all, everything that I bought is bouncing, right? People are like, oh, this didn't go through this out of time. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, don't get me wrong. Baby ain't over here balling, but if I buy something, I have enough for it. So yeah, I'm over here like, oh, spirit just showed up for me, got my stuff paid for, da 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 da. And now this week, I can't even pay for the things I'm supposed to because it looks like my account is in a negative because they didn't went back and reverse payments that I didn't got in the past. So now, I, I when I tell y'all, I have just been so confused because I'm happy. I'm happily. I'm happily in this minimalistic life I'm still creating I'm not asking for much and yet so many things keep coming up that make me feel like it's difficult to survive right and I don't want to do that thing where I compare my like oh it's other people that got it worse than you oh all this other stuff going on this is what you worried about well guess what perception is reality I don't live those lives this life sometimes is difficult because I feel like my job and my purpose is to serve and give to people but I've also learned boundaries and self-love. So at what point am I supposed to stop giving and take care of myself? So I, sometimes I feel conflicted. But then things like the interview that I have tomorrow and seeing the shows that we've produced and doing great things has just had me like, I'm not, I, I just feel like I'm in the rubble. I feel like I've come out of the cocoon and it's still chic, sticky shit on my wings. That's how I feel. I feel like I've just gotten out of a cocoon. Yes, I'm a butterfly, but don't nobody talk about that sticky, creamy shit. It be all on your wings when it's time to fly. And so you wondering why, why the fuck my wings don't work? I done went through eclipses. I done went through therapies. I done purged. Why is it still sticky shit on my wings? And still I'm grateful, still I don't choose another life, but I do know that I have to trust. I have to trust that my tribe will find me, that my real tribe will be with me. The people that fall off, it's okay, but the things that this platform is going into, it's going to have everything in one place. Content from multiple types of creators in one place. So people don't have to subscribe to multiple Patreons and things like that. But I also have a job you know so 
I have to create. I have to do it as safe as I can for me. And, you know, when I don't feel right, I'm just, I'm not going to get on the mic. It's one thing for me to, you know, be kind of sad. Like, I'm going to hear kind of sad today, but I still feel like spirit is moving me. But I'm not going to sit down when I feel like it's just me talking and me rambling and things like that. And so it's just difficult because I don't know sometimes if I'm doing the right things. And, you know, sometimes it's difficult because I ask for reviews. And sometimes I get them. But compared to the number of listens, compared to the actual number of reviews that I get, it doesn't compare. You, you sometimes you put out free content and you say, hey, can you please just repost the clips or can you please follow? Can you please drop this in the group chat? And I look and none of my numbers are changing. And it's like, it's nobody's fault, but sometimes that can hurt because it's like all of my content is free. It's, it's difficult. It's difficult because I don't want to place blame because that's not appropriate. It's not even how I feel. But... I can be transparent and honest and say sometimes it just makes me question myself. Like, am I just on this motherfucker sharing my business and telling all my my business for nothing? <laughs> sometimes I'm just confused because I'm giving away so much and I just, I don't want to struggle every day. I don't. And I finally got in a a, a comfortable place where I wasn't wanting for anything. I would go days without even asking for anything, right? Do you know how hard that is? How, when is the last time you went a day and you didn't want anything? You didn't ask for anything. You didn't say, oh, I wish I had this. You were just good. How many days in a row can you go without spending money? <laughs> and those are things that I'm learning through the minimalist lifestyle. It's really showing me where privilege shows up. And it's also showing me where capitalism is acting a plum fucking fool, Right? So it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. I'm a van lifer, and in Florida, they're trying to make it illegal to sleep in your car. Make it make sense. They have a war on poor people as billionaires suck up all the money. Like, I've been following pages that have been sharing what the government does with your taxes and the amount that they give to war compared to how much they give to Medicaid is ridiculous. Like, a lot of times we're trying to compare ourselves on a measuring stick that's faulty, you know, and it's built, capitalism is built off the backs of free labor, you know, so anyways, um, <laughs> B, oh, hey, sorry, y'all. We got to shoot in like 30 minutes. So, uh, okay. All right. So last thing we're going to do is put these tarot cards so I can let y'all get up out of here because like I said, I really do have a job. So we have to shoot. B. All right. Hola. Man, look, I'm on here pouring my little soul out. Yeah, I got to release a solo. Huh? Ugh. All right, y'all. See, I told y'all I'm doing everything I can to release these episodes. And like I said, we've been trying to record these. I recorded this the other day and the audio did not work. So, anyways, you have to shoot in like 30 minutes. So, I'm about to do these tarot cards and then we're going to get the fuck up out of here. Yes, I'm talking to No, it's all on. It's recording. I release a solo episode of the podcast every every week. Huh? Uh, real content made by real people. I tell, I tell them, the folks, that I'm, you know, a regular person. <laughs> All right. So, what do I need to know? And before we go, make sure that y'all um subscribe to the youtube for the van vlog i believe that the first one drops may 18th don't hold me to it so far i'm on schedule but i like i said i'm shooting it and editing it myself and my videographer teacher expects perfection so it is taking a little longer than i thought but i have already recorded all the stuff for the first vlog so i'm just in the editing process now um and so you know y'all be patient with me um 
I am going to try to do one more of these um, before I have to get back on the road on Friday. And so um, there is not going to be a regular episode released this week because I just wanted to do two solos because we just needed to catch up. And I also need time to edit the other episodes that have come out. So. All right. Ten of Cups. I love and I'm loved by others. I feel that. I love you guys and I know y'all love me. Um, let's see what else. Two of Wands. I give myself permission to dream big. I feel that. I feel that a lot. Um, what else? I had the Eight of Pentacles. The universe creates through me. I have one more, but let me read these because once I open it, it'll clear. All right. So Ten of Cups, emotional fulfillment and happiness due to a deep sense of unity with the world around you. This card is about harmony and the joy that results from it. Applying to your family, friends, and loved ones. There is a deep sense of community associated with this card. Absolutely. Whether, and I don't know if you guys understand, but I need you guys. Not just for financial support. I actually need you guys. I don't deal with a lot of my family not because I don't want to because that's just not in the cards for me in this lifetime a lot of my family and things that give me the protection and support um, that I need come from community it's been in my chart it's been in multiple readings and also it's been my experience that I create what I need I've always been a person that will go get what I need and yes I have my friends and I've had rich rich bible study and I have my best friends and things like that but also you guys are huge part of that there are some of you guys out there that have been out there since I started sexual essentials it's always one of those messages when somebody's like oh I remember when you were in the the blue chair on the big chalkboard wall da 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 like people have been with me I know that my spirit guides I know that my ancestors have sent me community because I need it and I deserve it so please don't ever get that twisted like I talk to y'all like this because we're family and I know that you don't always get what you need from the people that you are blood related to Sometimes it's from somebody that you're listening to that you don't know, and that's okay. So, I just need y'all to know that. That y'all are very, very, very special to me. All right, so, Two of Wands, the transformation of vision and ambition into planning and progress. Starting to move into a way forward, the man beholds the material in which he can make his, make his designs come true. I feel like that definitely has to do with the van because it's the first thing that I have full creative control over. I'm shooting it, I'm editing it, promoting it. It's super dope. All right, so Eight of Pentacles. This card stretches, stresses the importance of hard work and diligence in accomplishing your goals. It indicates a time to buckle down, study, achieve new skills, all in the name of being able to change your circumstances. I guess more work is needed. <laughs> and then this one is the Nine of Swords. And I, even though I only pulled what, oh wait. Did I choose the right one? Oh, nine of wands. Uh-oh, nine of wands. <laughs> All right. I, even though I didn't pull, I pulled two wands, but I was sorting through when I was shuffling, I kept seeing a whole bunch of them. So um, the wands are for creativity, passion, inspiration, willpower, and drive. Um, and this card says resilience, pushing forward, last stretch. You are close to achieving a victory after a time of battle and hard work. You have spent time pursuing what you believe to be right. Though this was difficult and draining, you are reaching a point of exhaustion, but there is only a small way to go before your ultimate goal. Yeah. This is why I can't stop doing it every spiritual practice that I have put in place to help my tuition and help 
be my support system. And every time I follow through and I sit down and talk to y'all, even though I don't know what I'm going to say, even when I'm letting spirit use me, every time I follow what I know is faith, I'm always given that warm, fuzzy feeling that tells me I'm doing the right thing despite my life looking crazy. Like, y'all, I was so mortified when they turned off that gas. Mortified. Because I felt like I didn't deserve that. And I know y'all probably like, girl, what the fuck they got to do with paying your bills? <laughs> But mortified. And like, yes, I was able to pay it the next day. But even the reason I didn't have the money was because of the fraud lady. Them taking an extra whatever out of my account. Like, I've been so strong, you guys. I've been so strong. And I just, I hope y'all know that I'm updating y'all and staying in touch with you guys as much as I can. Y'all just put me on the premise, okay? If you're listening to this, the hope is that another episode will drop this week. Another solo. Hopefully, I'll be in a better headspace. And also, um, please make sure you subscribe to I Am Home. Um, even if you're not interested in tiny homes or vans, it's much different than this show because it's going to show how I maneuver on the road. Sometimes with a child, sometimes by myself but how I maneuver in a tiny home space on an economical, very tight budget um, and how I do all of that and how I still, in my opinion, live a very luxurious life. And I don't know what you guys consider luxury, but having peace, having a certain aesthetic to how I do things, like, can I just go on a shopping spree right now? No, but I do have picnics. I go see waterfalls. I go see Baby Grand Canyon and I... I'm always somewhere beautiful, you know, so I love you guys. Um, don't forget this Friday um, is our monthly meetup on Patreon. So please make sure that you um, join us there. Um, and I love y'all. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.